Hey teacher fam, today I'm gonna to show you how to use buttons in Canvas the right way with your Bitmoji Classroom. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna dive right into this page on Canvas and here you can see I have embedded my Bitmoji Classroom. But let's say I wanna add some buttons up here or some buttons at the bottom. That's what we're gonna talk about today. Now, there are two types of buttons that you should be aware of, and one is um, a button, and I want you to watch how this page loads, an image button versus a canvas button. So you notice the canvas blue button, and then up pops this image-based button. Now, the canvas button is something you can use with code in Canvas, and this is an image you upload and link. And so I'm gonna talk about the differences and why you should use the canvas button. So, um, I'm also going to cover some sites that you can use like the Button Factory, Google Drawing. There's places to make buttons in the image style, but that's um, that's for the end. And hopefully you believe me uh, when I say you should use the canvas buttons. So let's we've already seen that the canvas button loads quicker quicker because it's not loading an actual image. It's just color and pixels. And so when I shrink this, you notice the canvas button actually responds to the size of the screen. That's because the canvas button is responsive. So that's number two, it responds to the size of the screen and it loads quicker. Uh, now, number three, if your student needs accessibility features like a screen reader, the canvas button will actually be read by the screen reader as is. It will read the text that's uh, in the button because it's actual text. Now, when you build an image-based button, you're baking in that text into the part of the graphic and the computer, the screen, the browser cannot read it at all. So you have to add alt tags so that it's accessible. So the canvas buttons are also accessible. They load quicker, they're ex more accessible, and um, they are responsive. And there's other reasons. Oh, well, they're editable. So let's say I wanted to go edit this I click the HTML editor, and if I want to say canvas big blue button or canvas blue button, I'll say um, canvas surprise, and I save it, I can edit that button right there. But I cannot edit this text because it's already baked into the image. Okay, those are the advantage of the canvas buttons. Now I'm going to show you how easy it is to use. So I'm going to go back to my pages. I'm going to go back to here's the page I want to edit. Actually, we're going to add some buttons up here. And what I've done is I've created a cheat sheet for you. And the cheat sheet is just a way to um, clicking my um, I'm clicking my HTML editor. And so I am gonna dive into the custom button codes. And the way I've set up this uh, uh, Google Doc that you can get a copy of is one button by itself, two buttons, three buttons, four buttons, and you just copy the code and edit. And down here are some references of the type of uh, buttons that Canvas has baked into its code. All right, so let's say we wanna add this, I love this button. It's a make a copy button, has a little icon pointing outward, um, showing that you're gonna go to another site. And I'm just gonna add this above. So I just space down and add my HTML there. I'm gonna add my HTML there, and I'm gonna click save. And we see right above the uh, this green banner, uh, that's another tutorial. Uh, we see a make a copy button, and it launches make a copy. All right, so that's beautiful. So there's actually uh, a link in there. So in this uh, in this cheat sheet, you'll see the links are in blue and you can edit those and then the text is in red. Now, once you paste into the HTML editor, you'll lose those colors, but you can paste these into a text editor or a Google Doc, edit them and then paste them into Canvas. All right, let's do, um, let's do three buttons across the top. And what I want, so we're gonna create something that looks like this above our Bitmoji Classroom. We go over here, I'm gonna jump into edit, I'm gonna remove HTML editor, I'm gonna remove that first button, and then I'm gonna paste my three buttons across the top. Now, I've already uh, set these up so it's a weekly to-do list, reading and writing, but you can edit those if you wanted to, uh, let's say call this first one calendar, you can call it calendar and save. All right, that's how easy it is to edit. Now, here's the other advantage of a canvas, canvas button is it has two states, active and deactivated. So it, when you hover over, you'll notice the color darkens and that's helping this make a engaging, responsive uh, experience for your students. 
So they load faster. They're, they're responsive to the display screen size. Um, they, they change when you hover over them. Uh, they're more accessible. And um, the trick is how I'm getting these evenly spaced. And there's a reason why I'm not using tables. They're evenly spaced because there's a percent. And uh, I'll just show you. You can see right here. I've set when I have buttons to two or three, um, I just have different widths. And so that just takes the canvas page width and divides it up and say, oh, okay, you want that you know, 20% wide, then it leaves this much room. So that's how easy it is to use. And I hopefully you will want to add canvas buttons rather than image buttons uh, to, your, to your Bitmoji classroom page. I'm just gonna do this one down at the bottom launch it we're going to put it all the way underneath and save so we have three green color buttons at the top i have four red color buttons at the bottom notice they change when i hover over them that's it that's it and notice they're all responsive so as i shrink the size of the screen it reconfigures and makes sure that those buttons um, are legible and they're not cut off all right. Thank you for joining me. You can subscribe if you like this. Leave a comment. Leave a question underneath the video. And thanks for being with us. Um, and hopefully use and take advantage of Canvas buttons. All right. I did promise you that I would show you where to get image buttons. So if you want to go to the button factory, that's the old URL. It read, uh, redirects to clickminded.com button generator. You can tie it in um, your text over here, canvas button. And you can see that it updates in the middle. Uh, that's one. You can also do uh, buttonoptimizer.com. Now this is, you can type canvas button there and then you can download it. Now this does look like it changes when you hover over it, but you need CSS for that. and unless you're the canvas administrator you can't install css but you can download the png you can also go to your drive and you're able to do a drawing oops you're able to do a google drawing and so you can do a shape something like that um, to me this is very tedious and it takes a lot of steps and then you insert a text box and you go canvas button um, it doesn't look that great to me and also you can't edit it later with any of these image based buttons you can't edit later so those are three different ways oh here's another way is you can go to canva.com and you can create a button um, in there let's just see if they have anything uh, look they have buttons in here yeah let's do this is a cute little start button and so we can edit that and canvas button there you go now you see the problem with editing uh, you have to adjust the size of the image, the size of the text, and it's a pain. And the canvas buttons all do that. They're built in. And uh, so now I can just turn this uh, background transparent or white. Then I use remove.bg to remove that so I can build buttons in Canva as well. Another step, um, again, canvas is it's quicker, it's editable, it's accessible, it resizes with the size of the screen, it's active, it uh, reacts to the cursor. Um, there's all sorts of reasons it's accessible to screen readers, whereas these image-based buttons aren't. So something to consider.